Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come in, come in, come in. This is Tamika Zen. I am Tamika. Get on in here, y'all. Get on in here. Kick off your shoes and relax your feet. You are now in the den. So, guys, you know we got to talk about it, honey. You know we got to break it on down. This is my review recap for Love After Lockup, Life After Lockup, Habitual Offender, Season 4, Episode 41, child. Because you know we TV going to keep these dag on episodes going up to 100, all right? We keep going like the Energizer Bunny. We don't stop, all right? Right now, we should be in Season 5, some things say Season 5, some things season, season 4. We going to go with it. Nonetheless, we are back again with dag on blaine child and Lindsay, we are with monique and derek we are with sarah and she, um sarah and um sean child we are with tc and amber poppy back in the building and i'm asking why 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 are these people on my tv again we are with taylor and chance and justine and michael baby okay it's all going down <laughs> today with this daggone review y'all all right we are back to the messiness the foolishness and the foolery of it all and so of course we start out with Lindsay and daggone you know blame child all right it is heaven we are like newlyweds all right on our honeymoon stuff is still sweet we smiling we happy that we kicked Deontay to the curb we feel like we couldn't have made a better choice but do we okay because Lindsay ends up hitting the fan when she finds out that blaine is holding a big old secret from her and i said well i guess the grass ain't always greener on the other side you thought you was dropping that zero and getting with a hero girl but now you like lies 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 in the meantime justine is doing what she should have done when she first met dag on michael in jail and reevaluating things after being pregnant and wondering if this is really the man that is for her and if he can be there for her kids all her insecurities and fears and concerns is bubbling up and coming out okay Derek I even though child he was out two seconds cheated on Monique and they trying to see if they could come back together he's saying I'm so sorry girl please forgive me I love you and of course she is running over there to go see him and saying that she has a secret of her own Taylor still ain't trusting Chance, baby, and neither do I, okay? Neither do I. I don't blame you, damn Taylor. I just wish that you would have never got pregnant from him. But it is what it is, boo. We already got this baby on the way, so we trying to see what they up to. Sean is still daggone Sean, but at least he's taking time out to play a game with his kid, honey. But Sarah ain't here for that, all right? She got her sex wing, and she want him up on it. And since he not, she going out here to see her daughter father and see what's going on with him, you know? And so, um, let's go ahead and get into all of this, child. Talk about all of it. Break it on down. Now, of course, these are not the only couples that are going to be on, you know, this show. These was the ones that we got for t last night's episode, I should say, y'all, because I am recording this late, but I did do a live last night if y'all want to check it out. Just the overall discussion. And we know that Marcelino and Brittany are supposed to be up here too. Why? I didn't want to see them no more. We didn't need them. I feel like it's other couples that have been on Love at the Lockup that they could have brought back besides them. And I feel the same way pertaining to Amber and Puppy. I really didn't need it. And I really didn't need to see Sean and Sarah either. But we're going to ride this thing to the wheels fall off, honey. Okay. And see where it go. So get into Blaine and Lindsay, child. They walk in, Okay and he talking about how cute she look and how she trying to put on you know her nice little heels and her feet is hurting so we gotta go slow she's saying that this you know what i'm saying is the honeymoon period and basically she wants to make sure that things do not get you know what i'm saying a little dull or whatever because you know so far so good that hasn't happened right and she's asking him if he's nervous about you know, um, going to this meeting and finding out what this situation is going to be and that all the money they had, they invested into this home. You know, this is something she's dreamed of and wanted to do. And she's finally getting to enjoy her life, live it the way she want to live it, focus on, you know, him, focus on her daughter and all this other kind of stuff. You know, they over here picking up paint and different things to, you know what I'm saying, put into work into this place that they got. And so he's saying, no, why would I be nervous? What do I got to be nervous about? right and they hugging and kissing and it's all sweet you know he's saying how he finally got the woman of his dreams and he never felt this way before so they are on cloud nine okay and feeling really good saying they're gonna stick together and um 
you know, this is the best decision of her life. The things in the past are gone. He did bad things in his past, but now his life is coming together. So, so far, they both feeling great with how, you know, things is going and they're feeling good with these updates that they are giving, child. But we know that is slowly about to come to a damn halt. And so, you know, in the meantime, they go into this law firm and they basically saying, you know, it's good to see y'all. And he's saying, you know, it's good to see them. They saying it's good to see him. He said, you know, I want to check on these daggone charges that I got and see really what's what. And he was like, are you aware? You know, this is what the lawyer says. Are you aware of all the charges you have? And he says, yes. And he's like, you have indictments. And Lindsay's starting to look like. Uh, what he talking about? Okay, what you talking about, Willis? Right, and so he says it's two, two counts from 2016. There's a possession charge of um amphetamines. Okay, and he basically was saying that there's also a weapons charge. All right, and we also have you know like a possession of a gun. A gun, and so here go Lindsay looking again. You know, being a prior convicted felon. He basically is also looking at, you know, an indictment alleging that he had um, possession of hydrocodone the same day, y'all, okay? So, Blaine been getting pretty busy, all right? And apparently haven't been telling Lindsay about none of these things, all right, child? And so, basically, you know, now they got to look into this. And he was like, at least two of the prior convictions were basically, you know, to the point where he could be indicted of a habitual offender. So she's like, what are you talking about? Like, I had no idea about none of this. And she was like, you know, um, you know, the lawyer says there's a potential for him to spend 19 years in jail. So she's just like looking at him. In the meantime, he's like, all right. And she was like, wait a minute, you knew about all these charges? She's like habitual. He's like, yeah. She was like, and you didn't think to mention them to me? This never came up in the conversation. I'm confused. And he's like, well, I knew I had the charges or whatever, but you never really asked. She's like, excuse me. I never really asked. I didn't think I had to ask. And the lawyer sitting here looking like, child, I don't want to be a part of this. All I want to know is if y'all going to give me my damn money because um, I'm sorry to interrupt, but there's another thing we got to do discuss okay in order for me to take care and help you out with these then that will cost you fifteen thousand, child okay that's what you gotta pay me so she was like you know him being a habitual um you know having habitual charges or whatever is a big deal she was like that's a difference between five and 25 years and how the hell you know he not gonna tell me that all this stuff was even in the damn picture and all of this was going down she said you know when i was asking him why he couldn't go bail out my dad going friend he was basically saying it was because he has some tickets tickets and these damn charges is two different things you know how could you sit here and lie to me like this right and so of course, she is just really super upset and saying she can't believe this. And she was like, you know, you've been lying to me all this time. So she gets up and walks out. OK, after this lawyer starts talking about 15,000, because she was like, this is just freaking, you know, unbelievable. You basically sat right in my face and was telling me <laughs> lies. And now you acting like it's no big deal when you already knew that, you know, what I'm saying everything that had been going on and, you know, just telling me bold face lies. I don't appreciate this. All right. And so, child, Lindsay get up and walk out. And mind you, Blaine is sitting here like everything is cool. And he's saying he didn't want to jeopardize the relationship. I said, really? And, you know, it's no big deal. And he going to work it out and make it do what it got to do. And, you know, he's not looking concerned at all. As a matter of fact, he's looking like he ain't got no damn emotion. Like none of this stuff means nothing to him at all. When the lawyer is saying that it would cost 15000 he's like, mm, okay. You know, and she's like, okay, hey, like, are you smoking crack right now? Because you bugging. Obviously, you are not hearing what this man is saying. You would have thought the man was saying it was five dollars. Right. And so, of course, the lawyer is telling him because of the seriousness of these charges, you know, yeah, it's going to cost you. This ain't going to be no walk in the park. All right. The walk in the park is over. And so, you know, she got ahead and she walk outside and she's sitting on the curb and you know, all crying and I can't believe this. And you know what I mean? I didn't think that this would be like this and I don't understand this. I don't know how it got to this and all of that kind of stuff. Right. And then by the time that he walks out, 
she's like walking down the block, walking away from him. And he keeps saying like, come on, I know you ain't really mad like that. And you're not going to act like that and get in the car. And she keeps telling him like, get away from me, get away from me, get away from me. Okay. No, I don't want to talk to you. Leave me alone. I'm serious right now. I mean it. And they always got to hurry up. And no matter who it is, whenever one of these couples is fighting, we got to act like we did speed racers and drive off. You know what I'm saying? All kind of crazy talking about, okay, you know what I'm saying? If you want it like that, then bye. And just leaves her there, right? And she is basically saying how, you know, she gave up Deontay for this. I said, girl, yeah, you sure did, okay? And be happy with your choice because you said that's who you wanted. Now, moving on from there, next up, we get Michael and, I mean, sorry, we get Monique and Derek Child. And we seeing that Derek is basically, you know, saying that he want to make up with Monique. He, she's supposed to be on her way there. He's out with his dad going to sisters. And I'm sorry, but I don't like these chicks. I don't at all. Okay. It's one thing. They are literally general things that you can complain about with Monique that I would 110% agree with you with because she have us stuff too. But for you to sit here and go after this girl all the time about her dad going wait, obviously your brother don't got a problem with it. Now he over here talking about he's looking for a gift for her. She's supposed to be coming out. He want to apologize to her. They like, oh, well, what did you do? You know, I cheated. So he's looking for a candle. I said a candle, a candle for cheating. That's what we think that's supposed to make up for them cheating. Okay. So they smelling the candles and looking at the candles and having a conversation while they in the store or whatever. And the sister's just going on and on and on. I just don't like her, okay? I don't like her. I hate her. I hate the relationship. I hate how she look. I hate how she walk. I hate how she talk. I hate that she's here. I don't understand what the heck you want to be with her for. Nothing about her makes sense. You know, I don't like relationships where the man is bigger than, I mean, where the, yeah, a man is smaller, I should say. Then the woman and all of this kind of stuff. And I'm like, girl, who cares? You don't got to like her because you ain't got to be the one to lay in the bed with her. I'm confused as why you are so bothered by this. You know what I'm saying? And in the meantime, we seeing uh, Monique riding in the car with her sisters. And she's like, Derek has sex with another woman. They like, you know, I was. she said she was just disgusted. They like, what? They was like, but he only been out for two damn seconds. How the hell he already had a chance to get with another woman? Easy. It don't take much. You know, she talking about as soon as she left he was already sending these different texts and things of that nature and she found out because typical dag or monique and this is where she's wrong at um basically was tracking his phone you know because she was the one that bought the phone she was able to look into it and see who he's texting and all of that kind of stuff remember she wants to put the cameras in her grandma in his grandmother's house and i never agreed with any of that and so of course her sister says the same thing to her that i have been saying during this whole time girl if you have to do all of that then obviously there's a problem with trust and you should not even be with somebody if you got to be, you know, checking every damn thing. That's just a bit much. And she's basically like, yeah, that's the point. I don't trust him. So therefore, that's why I had all that on there. And that's why I was checking, you know. And so meanwhile, when we flip back to his sisters, they asking him, do he plan on being, you know, faithful now? Well, faithful period. And he says, yes, now he is like he's all in. He knows who this is, who he wants to be with. He made a mistake and, you know, that's who he's trying to be with. And they got to basically respect it. And so, you know, they laughing and talking about how much they hate her and all this stuff. And he like, yo, chill, shut up, you know, making fun, putting these two dresses, um, you know, next to each other and being like, oh, it would take these two for her to fit in. So she calls on the phone and he puts it on speaker. He's like, you know, my sister said, hi, whatever the case may be, both of them. Like, you know, this is supposed to be all about them all starting with a fresh start. Him starting with a fresh start with her as far as their relationship together and also his sister's giving her a chance. So now Monique was like, tell them I said hi they gonna talk about oh I heard her say tell them hoes I said hi and he's like no she didn't cut it out don't start that and then Monique basically is like no I did not say that I said tell them I said hi she was like see we already starting with the foolishness and the foolery if this is gonna have you know how it's gonna be then I would pretty much not want to be bothered because I didn't come here for no damn drama like they already disrespecting me so 
he was like, you know, I see not, you know, she says, I see nothing has changed since the last time we seen, you know, each other, or whatever. And I was around them. And so he's like telling them now nah, y'all doing too much. And he's like, I'm glad you here because she says she's close by. He was like, I can't wait to see you. She's asking what we got going on for tonight. And he was like, you know, it's going to be a surprise. So she like, oh, OK, I can't wait, you know, looking forward to it. And he was like, I plan on making it up to you. I plan on making you happy. You know, I'm glad that you came back. And I'm here, so obviously we are trying to see if we can make things right, right? And she's like, I just hope that you mean it and he, that we could get that trust back with each other, whatever, right? And so he's like, yeah, we definitely going to rebuild. And, you know, we are working on rebuilding the trust. I say, yeah, okay, Derek, whatever you say, right? And, of course, Monique going to run behind him anyway. And this is exactly what, you know, I don't can't remember if it's her cousin and her friend or her sister, her friend, but this is exactly what they say to her. They was like, so are you going to just fall into him like you always do? You know, she talking about, oh, he needs to be doing everything that he needs to do to make me feel comfortable again and be able to trust him again. They asking how the phone conversation went and she was like, it's pretty good. He's saying that he got a surprise for me and that he wants to make it up to me. And so they was like, well, we hope that you are not going to just you know, fall into the trap and believe everything that he says. And it's actually going to have to be where he got to be putting something into it and showing you some daggone actions, you know, don't forget about everything. And she was like, no, I'm definitely not going to just fall for it. But they know she full of it. And I know she full of it too, child. Okay. And so, you know, later we see her get all dressed up or whatever. And they like, okay, girl, like I like the outfit and I definitely like the makeup. You looking good, whatever have you. And so they like, you know, are you scared and nervous? Are you ready for tonight? And she like, yeah, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? I want to go see what he is going to be talking about. So when she get there, he talking about some, you know, hey, big girl. I'm like, you ain't even have to add the big girl in there, child. I'm pretty sure she knows she big. I know I'm big. All right. So nonetheless, you know, he's telling her she look good. She telling him he look good. You know, oh, I miss you. You miss me. You know what I'm saying? I love you. You love me. All of that good stuff. And then, you know, they are standing there talking. And of course, he's still apologizing, saying that is a mistake that he made. And I said it on my live. I think I was even saying it last week in my review. At the end of the day, I am not shocked that Derek cheated. I'm not saying that that makes it OK or that he didn't do anything wrong because he definitely did. Just as she said to him in last night's episode, if you know you didn't want to be bothered with me, then you should have just said that if you wasn't trying to have a relationship with me, if you wanted a break, whatever it may be, you should have just told the truth and told me that. But of course, that's not what they're going to do. Right. But I'm just saying in general, I am not shocked that he did this because you're talking about somebody that went to jail young, was locked up for nine years, got out, whatever have you, and haven't really got to experience anything. So in my opinion, it would not have mattered whether it's a big girl, small girl, brown girl, black girl, yellow girl, whatever. He was going to still do what he going to do. You know, he over here telling Monique, oh, I got tempted. You know, I fell into a little mess for a minute or whatever, but I don't love her. I don't want a relationship with her. It was nothing that was never serious or whatever the case may be. I don't feel for her the way that I feel for you and I love you and all of this stuff. And so she, he's, she's asking if it was just her or if it was others and he's saying it was just her and that's done and over with. I highly don't believe that either, but okay, you know, so he was like, he cheated as soon as she went back to Chicago. And of course we get the flashback where he was showing his brother and, um, you know, all the message that he was getting in the video from somebody and they like, Oh, who's that girl? And yeah, she's more your type and all of that. And so they go ahead and sit down while they were still standing and talking rather than he was saying how, you know, he knows that this is who he love and that, you know, he wants them to be able to think about this and be able to be together. You know, he wants them to be a family and he wants to get it right and all of this kind of stuff. And so she was like, you know, basically saying, well, why wasn't you honest with me? Why did I have to go through your phone records and all of that? It shouldn't have been all of that. You should have just been the one to tell me. Girl, Monique, you already know that wasn't happening. OK, and I know it and he know it. So she's like, it's really hard that. You know, we doing this long distance relationship, make it even harder, whatever. And he talking about that's not what I wanted and that's not what you wanted. So he was like, at this point, he just want them to be able to start over again and have a clean slate. And so he was like, yeah, that's basically what I'm saying. I want us to be able to leave the past behind and put it behind us. And of course, none of us were shocked about them still being together or them ending up being on this show. Because if you see them, you know, on social media, 
they were still posting pictures and she was still saying that they was together, right? So obviously, even after all that whole performance she put on in the last season saying she wasn't going to have nothing to do with him, she is, okay? And so they say they're not going to be arguing with each other and having this drama-filled relationship or whatever. And then he's like, so can we go back to the place and, you know, have some makeup sex? And she's like, um, yeah, I would love that. But before we do, okay... I need you to go ahead and sit down because I do want to talk to you about something. And he's like, what's that? What's going on now? So she was like, well, the reason why I wanted to come out here too is because my dad going period is late. Okay. I have not got it yet. I am late. And, um, you know, we could possibly be having a baby. We could be pregnant. Baby, the way Derek was like, get the hell up out of here. I know you freaking lying, okay? He was pissed. He was like, no, 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 okay? This cannot be. And she was like, well, damn, I wasn't expecting that reaction, you know, from him. She was like, I know this is a little shocking and I wasn't expecting it either. But, you know, that kind of hurt my feeling that he's reacting like that. And he's basically like, oh, are you serious? Are you serious? Standing up and everything. So then he calms it down and he's like, well, no, I'm just saying this is not a good thing for us to be talking about something. You could be pregnant or whatever. You know what I'm saying? This is too fast. We don't have our stuff together. We know we are near being where we need to be as far as our relationship, as far as us as individuals. And so this would not be a good thing if that was to be the case and she basically is like yeah well I wasn't expecting it either but at the end of the day I'm not on no type of birth control and I was like see that's the part that kills me with these type of situations because y'all coming home y'all talking about getting married y'all sleeping without freaking um protection with people that you don't know from a hole in the wall you know that that could possibly mean that you're getting pregnant by somebody and it also could possibly mean y'all daggone getting sexually transmitted to Disease, transmitted diseases child if y'all have not been checked out and don't know that y'all clean like why y'all jumping out and having unprotected sex in the first place but then you getting so upset at the possibility of her being pregnant but you wasn't putting on condoms either Derek so you know we know how that song and dance goes and he was like you know I told you from the beginning that I didn't want to rush it so again, Derek, I asked, you know, it takes two out here, okay? And she's saying she wasn't prepared for it either, but he basically ends up saying it's going to be cool and that is all going to work out in the end. I said, child, we shall see because y'all just a hot ass mess just like, you know what I'm saying, everybody in this damn cast is, okay? So moving on from there, I think the next couple we got was Justine and Michael and we see that. You know, she has him go with her and the kids to this karate, basically having them, you know, bonding and spending time. And this is something that you think would be making her smile, would make her happy, would be encouraging her that they're getting along good. I also am curious to know how Michael's kids are feeling because we know that he told her mother that, you know, she he they basically had said to him, like, please, no babies. You know, at the end of the day, we missed a lot of time with you. And so when you come in home, we really want to be able to be there with you and get that time we can get. You know, we can't get back the time that we lost. And it's very limited time at that or on top of that because of the fact that he really can't travel how he wants to because of the whole parole thing. So at the end of the day, you know, we don't know how that's going to affect them. And then his mom wasn't happy about hearing about the pregnancy either. And she put out a whole bunch of accusations. And of course, Justine ain't trying to tell her mom about that. So we get it. You know, when you're pregnant, your hormones is everywhere. Your emotions is everywhere. And um, I can understand from that perspective and that this may be a lot. However, comma, same thing I said pertaining to Derek and Monique. Same thing I'm saying with Justine and Michael. Y'all knew y'all was humping around like rabbits. Y'all know y'all was not using no daggone protection. So obviously, with damn seven kids between y'all, y'all know y'all don't got a problem with getting freaking pregnant. You would think you would have made the precautions that you were supposed to make and you didn't. So now this is a part of it. And now after she got a whole baby in her belly she decides to start crying about oh I don't know what this is gonna be where it's gonna go I've been through so many different things in my life and the things that I've subjected my kids to I really wanted them to be able to have a father that was gonna be there for them and that wasn't the case so you know she's looking at herself in ways like how did I fail 
you know, my kids by the decisions that I made. And is Michael now somebody that's stepping in and taking care of them going to end up hurting them and hurting her? And I'm like, girl, that's a little too little too late. That's what you were supposed to be thinking about when he was still locked up before y'all even got to the marriage part and before y'all bringing in a whole nother baby. And then she says that she knows he will be a good father to the baby that she's pregnant with. But she did have one that she was with before that was one way with the other kids and then one way with his own. Because at this point, her mother's sitting down having this conversation with her and kind of like, well, where's this coming from? Why are you worried about that now? She was like, you know, I would think you would be happy and this would be a good thing that he's spending time with the kids and you're having a whole damn baby from him right now. And she's like, yeah, I'm not worried about him with, you know, the baby that we're having, but what the dynamic is going to be with the other kids and how things is changing so much right now with having a male presence in the home and all of that and seeing the kids you know he's not used to the kids running around they're not biologically his and all of this and I'm like well yeah but he accepted that and accepted you when he made that commitment to you while he was locked up he knew that they wasn't biologically his so I get you know the thoughts and the insecurities on one hand but on the other hand I'm like this is kind of too little too late it's kind of backwards than where it should have been you know she starts to get real emotional and starts crying and her mother basically pulls her in and hugs her and tells her everything is going to be okay. And she said that she knew sooner or later, you know, these feelings was going to go ahead and come up within um Justine. But I was just like, girl, really? Like you pick a fine time for that. So then we had them walking, just the two of them alone to go talk. <coughs> Excuse me. And I don't know why they had on like the damn jackets that the Amazon workers or the school damn crossing guards be wearing. But OK, they had on these matching um like orange and green neon type of jackets and they sit down and she's explaining it to him again in the same way that she was just explaining it to her mother. And he was like, well, I'm a little confused, you know what I'm saying? And should I be appalled? OK, and should I be, you know, feeling like basically, um, you know, a little bit. Oh, gosh, what is the word that I'm looking for? It'll come to me, y'all. I don't want to pop too long on that, but y'all get the point. You know, offended or whatever that you're even saying that. He's like, of course I accepted you and the kids and I'm all in this. And you know what I'm saying? I would have never married you if that's not what it was. And he was like, you know, where is this coming from or whatever? And she was like, it's not you, it's me. It's just, you know, the type of fears that I be having at the end of the day, no matter how much I try. It just still basically is those feelings that come up and I can't control it. And I'm just so scared, you know what I'm saying? So she was like, it really sucks. And she was like, just please don't hurt me. And she was like, you know, if I let my guard down all the way, then, you know, I could end up being heartbroken. My kids could be heartbroken. So, of course, he's promising her that's not going to happen. And, you know, she was like, she didn't want him to have to deal with the leftover residue that she felt from, um, you know, somebody else and all that kind of stuff. And he was saying like, you know, I understand where you're coming from, but I am a little insulted. And he was like, right now you should be feeling relieved. Like I finally made the right decision. You know, he was like, you're getting the best version of me that nobody else didn't never have. And so, and he was like, hopefully I would be getting the best version of you. And she says, you know, she's been to hell through back. She's really had it bad. You know, she's been where she couldn't eat. She's been where she's been getting physical and verbal abuse. And and so when you're, you know, carrying that kind of baggage and you've been in those type of relationships, that does hit very different and it is very different to deal with. I would want to know if she has had any therapy and things of that nature, which I doubt that she probably has. So she probably hasn't dealt with a lot of it, which is why it comes up in a way that is coming up now. OK, child. But, you know, he was very compassionate about it and just was telling her, like, I got you. I'm here. Look at me. He was like, you ain't got to worry about that. We end this together. Like, listen to me. And I always really do love the way that, um, you know, Michael tends to deal with. When it's arguments, whether it's him and her arguing, whether it's her arguing with his family, whether it's the situation with her mom. Yeah, sometimes they get to bickering with each other as well. But overall, he has shown more positivity than negativity. And he has shown that he has her back, at least so far. OK, of course, we have to keep an eye on it and see where it goes. But there definitely has been wrong decisions made in between that by both of them. So I always say that Justine and Michael are kind of the two that I do root for. But, you know, sometimes things get sketchy with them, too. Now, moving on from them. 
I think we had um Sean and Sarah next, child. Lord have mercy. I don't even understand it, y'all, but it is what it is. They back up here. And Sarah's feeling a little neglected, okay? She's feeling like now that the baby is here, she's not getting as much attention. You know, she's feeling overwhelmed as a mother and like she have to, you know, do all the different things for the house and the baby and the this and the that. And she wants to be able to have me time. She wants to be able to have time, you know, for him to look at her as a, as a wife and, you know, feel sexy and different things of that nature, which is, you know, only natural as human. And so, you know, at one point she was telling her mom, like, she really can't get that many things done, you know, when she has the baby or whatever the case may be. I'm sorry. I'm skipping. I'm skipping. I definitely skipped. No, before that happened, she had called Sean up, right? And we seeing that she got this sex scene, okay, that her mama done put up. And Sean basically was downstairs playing a game with his son, you know what I'm saying? Um... And she had called him upstairs. So he come up and he's trying to see what's going on. And he's like, oh, what's happening here? And you look pretty. And he's like, what is this? And she's like, oh, it's a sex scene, you know, sex queen. But he's telling her, you know, okay, well, I actually got my dad on child on hold because I was coming up real quick to see what you wanted. But I'm going to have to go back down, you know, and play the game because she's like, well, what's wrong? What's happening? She was like, how the heck is it that I'm sitting here in this sex swing and you're looking like you're not turned on, like you could care less or whatever the case may be. She was like, I'm not getting the reaction that I was suspecting to get. And he was like, what do you want me to say? She's like, I don't want to say, you know, I don't want you to say nothing. I shouldn't have to tell you what to say. And so he was she was like you just not acting lately how you was acting before what's really going on and he was like I'm just tired I've been working a lot you know what I'm saying putting in a lot of eyes she was like well you're not too tired to play you know video games and all of that stuff and she was like just go you know what I'm saying it's weird I shouldn't have to beg you she was like what so now that you're married it's like you don't care no more and you don't have to put nothing into it and I'm with a baby and I'm trapped and you don't you know have to try anymore and I get what she's saying but at the same time Sarah I can't feel so sorry for you because baby you was warned of all this before Okay, Kelly warned you, girl. Yes, she did. And you saw signs before and all of that kind of stuff, right? And on the one hand that I do understand how you feel and that would freaking piss me off if somebody did that to me and I was damn ready. On the other hand, you know, Sean is saying, I'm trying to step up. I'm trying to be able to be there for you, be there for the baby and be there for my kids and work and make the money that I need to make. And so he got ahead to go back downstairs and he's just like, are you still there? You know, he's talking about he feel like being a husband is more than just being a boyfriend. And it is Sean. So hello. I'm glad you learned, you know, he got these responsibilities and he wants to provide for Sarah, Sarah and the baby. And he was like, he also wants to be able to give Sarah her attention, but then give you know his kids what they need he got eight kids to think about and he needs to find the balance I agree all of that is great you know hopefully if he is doing that and if he want to take time out to play with his damn child you know on a video game or whatever the case may be I'm all for it but you definitely do need to work more on the balance and find time for her because baby after this happened she was basically like yo and, you know, this feels like an old relationship. It feels like we've been together for almost 20 years and things is drying up. She was like, you know, who wants to be in a relationship where she feels like she's by herself and she's being alone? So the next thing you know, she starts talking about some, you know, oh, mama, can you watch the baby for a minute? Because it'd be hard to go ahead and go shopping and do things and buy, you know, when you got a child with you. And she like, OK, so what you doing? Going to the store or something like that? You're going to be going for a minute. And she's basically like, yeah. And the next thing you know, baby, uh, Sarah talking about she going to meet her daughter's father. I said, well, it's your ex for a reason, Sarah. What's going on here? Why are we going backwards? This not even somebody new. This is somebody old. And she's basically like, oh, yeah, well, we technically never broke up and it was nothing never bad between us or whatever the case may be. It was just one of them things where he got messed up and he went down whatever road. And I'm trying to reconnect with him and see if he's still down that road or if he cleans himself up and got himself together. OK, so. I said, child, be careful, Sarah. Okay, be careful. Like, I get it. At the end of the day, more than likely, they probably both cheating on each other. But if it's all like that, then why even stay together? Okay, y'all might as well just, you know what I'm saying? Clean it up, close it up, keep it up, and keep it pushing and keep on moving, honey. So now she actually saying that, you know, 
um she went to prison and that just kind of you know what i'm saying made them fall apart and that is a difference so i'm wondering why you didn't just look him up from the beginning instead of getting all into it with sean okay so now it's about finding out whether he's sober and whether he's serious about being a father to a father now i said the time framing that y'all pick for things though really be bugging me out right because she says her daughter abby um does deserve a dad and listen everybody deserve to have their dad or their mom in their life if they can so i'm not mad at that but i am kind of giving you the side i like some of the choices and the time framing of doing these things really is backwards and of course sean is not a fan of anthony right so she's saying well right now she don't care about sean feelings and at this point is really you know what i'm saying about her doing her she don't even feel like she married anyway well you may not feel like you married but you are girl so i don't think you know what i'm saying just your feelings have to do with it but basically we see her going in and you know being like hey okay going to meet him so now we basically get to amber and poppy who i really could not care less about and really just was like why are they here y'all why are they here right and so they get and tore up in this daggone bar and amber is doing what she always does she's telling daggone poppy about things that tc said and how tc feels and how he don't like them and she's like oh well i gotta change that and i gotta let him get to know who the real me is and i gotta be able to come by the house and see you and be with you and let him know that i'm not going nowhere and i'm always gonna be your friend and blah 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 right and um you know they realized that they so messed up from all these shots and i did say on my live last night like if amber supposed to have this messed up daggone liver from this freaking pregnancy because she was talking to her about how hard the pregnancy was for her and everything that happened and whatever and now getting married now and all this stuff and making plans and all of that and of course her and poppy could kind of bond and relate when it comes to that because she went through her so you know her thing too and she was like everything that you know we've been through and everything they've been through individually and stuff like that and she just want everything to be okay and so in the meantime they here at this bar and they sitting here you know doing these shots and poppy is saying how they in all these debts and she's like well what kind of debt are we talking about and she was saying they owe like fifty thousand dollars right now and he has medical bills and of course he still ain't damn divorced he's fighting for the divorce and all of this kind of stuff whatever so she's like well what's up with you and tc and she was like well of course the whole baby thing was a lot or whatever and that was really heartbreaking the most hardest thing she ever had to go through in her life and a lot to deal with or whatever have you and she was like he's doing all these things with the kids and you know they have what this really good relationship but it's still really hard right and so she was like i don't know how to describe it and so she was like you know of course this has kind of had a strain on their relationship sometimes it's hard for couples you know to get through something like that some couples don't make it so the fact that he's still standing there with her does say a lot about him so in the midst of them you know um being in the bar and drinking and all that of course she realizes that she don't have way more than one too many and she gonna have to go ahead and call him up and tell him to pick her up and she's telling poppy like oh no you know you could come to my house it don't matter if he's saying that you know he don't like you or he don't want you around or he think whatever way about you you know if i say that it's okay for you to come then it's okay for you to come you know you could come and you could lay down on the couch if you need to whatever have you and stuff like that right and even as they're sitting here in the um in the bar she's saying that um tc has these thoughts and ideas and that basically the thoughts and ideas he have are based on you know them getting into it in front of the kids at the cookout and all of that kind of stuff right and so yeah i can understand that first impressions or a lasting impression and that that would have an effect on him and i wouldn't want somebody around me that's arguing and fighting like that is toxic and in front of my kids but amber i'm pretty sure that's not the only reason why he has that impression it's also from the things that you've been saying girl well, you tell poppy things and then you tell him things and now you want it to be like kumbaya and you want them to 
just be able to get along. But sometimes it's not as simple as that. Sometimes people are not going to want to come around and get along with somebody that they always hear negative things about and they see in a negative way. They like, nah, that's your friend. If you want to be their friend over there, that's your business. I can't choose your friend, but I don't want no part of that. And you can't force them. And that to me is exactly what's happening in this situation. So then she's like, I'm going to call him to pick me up because she was just saying like, why can't you get a, you know, a lift? And she was like, no, no, I'm not going to drive anywhere. She was like, I'm going to pick, call him. So she puts him on speakerphone, you know, oh baby, can you come get me? And he was like, what? And then she's like, you know, here go pop in the back. Um, uh, me too. And it's Michelle. And she like, I know who you are. So he's like basically just saying what the f did you just say and she was like i'm saying i can't drive can you come get me like his voice changed and he getting real nasty and he's like oh i heard that or whatever right so obviously he was talking about poppy and she was like oh he got an attitude you know what i'm saying she was like what because i wanted to sleep on the couch and amber's laughing talking about oh he never talked to me like that you know don't worry and whatever the case may be don't pay that no mind i don't know what's going on because seriously he's never came out his mouth like that to me before for right and so then they basically you know poppy's like well let me get myself together before he get here so then um you know amber's saying on one hand she understands how he feel but on the other hand the way he's coming out is completely wrong so then when he drives up you know they both are outside waiting and she's basically like you know oh, i'm messed up that's why i called you and he's like yeah i could see that and Poppy, a.k.a. Michelle, comes up, introduces herself again and was like, I don't want you to look at me in a certain way. You know, I don't want you to think no way about me. She was like, I love this girl. I love how you treat her. I love the relationship y'all have. I love that she's happy. I want the best for her. I'm always going to be in her life. I'm not going nowhere. And so, therefore, I want you to be able to get used to me. I want, you know, us to be able to bond and to get to know each other better and all of that stuff. And TC could give two shits what Dan Poppy is saying because he already pretty much have made up and have her in his mind in a certain way already no matter what she's standing here saying to him now. But he's basically like okay or whatever the case may be and not really having too much to say to it. And then when they get back to the house, you know, Amber's just kind of like, OK, what was that all about? Why did you come out like that? She was like, I was confused. I didn't even know, you know, what I'm saying where that came from. And she's like, at the end of the day, that is my friend. I do still care about her. I am going to care about her. We are going to be friends. And, you know, I get that it was a funny situation what happened with the kids and the argument and everything like that when she came here. And sometimes we argue and fight like that. But then we come back together and you know, we're still able to be friends. And he was like, nah, you could keep it over there. He was like, let's just keep it real. He was like, aren't they drug dealers? Weren't they drug dealers? You know what I'm saying? They so dope, didn't they? He was like, let's not, you know what I'm saying? Sugar coat it. Let's call a thing a thing. Is that not what they did? Keep it real. He was like, you know, this is what you were talking about. So at first, Amber is smiling. He's like, you're the one that told me. And she was like, no, I told you what me and Poppy went to prison for. I was always honest about that. I told you what I went to prison for she was like you're going on what you feel like you know what i'm saying you've seen or whatever the case may be that's all i know i can't speak on nothing else and he's like no that's not what you said and she was like that is what i said she was like i didn't tell you that she was like don't say that i said that because it's not and he was like yes you did and she was like no i was working and we had a different life that than that you know what i'm saying that's what i told you she was like i told you what i went in for he was like are you gonna argue with me she was like are you for real are you for real she was like no i'm done with this i'm done she starts taking the camera off she's like you're talking about people in prison and what i did and that's not what i did and you're putting things on me that i never said and she was like you're talking about sending a person to prison she was like i'm done i'm done i'm done i'm done i'm done i'm absolutely done so he was like go ahead then get the hell out and go with them she was like oh no that's what you think she was like you'll leave this bitch before i do i pay to hear bills here let's not get get cute okay and, and talk about some damn we done she was like i'm telling you shut it the hell down so then she started kicking the camera people and everybody out because he was basically trying to insinuate as well like she just had made a drug deal yesterday like they were still selling drugs and that you know amber was the one that 
basically mentioned to this to, to him and he and she kept saying no now you're lying now you're putting words in my mouth I never said that I talked about the things that we've done in the past or whatever the case may be and what we went to jail in the first place for and then I came out and I got my shit together you know what I'm saying and that was that and saying that it wasn't no other um conversations so I don't know whether he misunderstood her or not I doubt very much that he did I think she was embarrassed that it came out on national tv and I think that she has a very bad habit outside of the argument that he witnessed for his own eyes that already made him feel a way of her telling him things every time her and Poppy get into arguments because we already know one minute her and Poppy are arguing and the next minute they're okay and when they're arguing she's telling him things and vice versa if she gets into an argument or something is going on in the reverse way with her she goes and tells Poppy she's the one that put the friction that's there in between Poppy and her God TC she's the one that put it there and then after she put it there she wants them to be able to come together and just be cool and act like nothing didn't exist i know plenty of people that do that same type of thing and it just does not work that way okay now moving on from them we basically i think the last person that i didn't talk about was taylor and chance and it really ain't too much to talk about with these two child because i've made it clear i never liked chance i never trusted chance the one good thing that i like about that taylor did is not marrying this dude yet okay she asking him to help her with the crib. He talking about some of his other things I got to do. Don't be expecting me to stop every minute and drop everything just because you saying that you need help. And she's like, come on. There's so many things that have piled up that have not got finished or whatever the case may be. And I'm kind of getting anxiety. I'm getting scared. I'm getting worried that, you know, we are. this is going to be another one of those things added to the list. Can you help me? In the meantime, he's talking about he got seven credit cards. And we know that when we were seeing them last... He was getting credit cards. He was getting loans. He was looking at a damn house. He over here. I'm saying, how is he getting all this stuff? You know what I'm saying? 11 months out of prison. You know, she, he, she asking him like, why are you piling on other things? And he talking about he going to make sure that nothing fall behind. That he going to, you know what I'm saying? He was asking why the um, light bill was so much. And he was like, oh, it should be about 350 for this or whatever. And we going to have to turn it off stuff at the 8 and all this other stuff, right? And literally putting out all these cards and putting them on the table. She's basically saying she 33 weeks pregnant. is 11 months of him out the prison. You know, she was like, can we go ahead and work on this daggone? You know, they keep on making plans but she's not ready to make no wedding plans until after the baby is born and she wants to make sure everything is good with him so i said yeah girl i agree with you with that part okay because child no all right chance is not the one for me okay <laughs> well no i ain't gotta be with him but i don't think he the one for her either so needless to say when he's coming in here to try to so-called help her with the crib you know he gets a call and he basically just looks at it and doesn't answer it. And she's like, who's that? And he was like, oh, nobody important. He was a matter of fact, he said, nobody. I didn't recognize the daggone number, right? And I don't pick up numbers I don't know. And I don't answer my phone on the weekend. She like, since when? And she was like, if it was the other way around, you know what I'm saying? Um, She would have to answer him or whatever, right? And so and tell him who it is and she would just give him the phone with no problem and all this other stuff if it was in reverse and he's like well i told you who it was or i answered you already and she's like no you didn't you just basically was saying that you don't know so she said these calls been happening a lot lately and she wondering what's going on with that like that's gonna make her not trust him even more and i'm guessing that she thinks that he's probably cheating on her with somebody but um Muchella brought up a good point when we was discussing it on the live this is probably damn debt collectors calling his damn phone because he probably older owing a whole bunch of people with him getting all these different loans and credit cards or maybe it could be a combination of both debt collectors and damn other woman calling when it come to chance i don't put nothing past you know he going in the bathroom running the damn water hiding out talking about i know it's funny for me to be hiding in here and he calculating things on a damn calculator and got a damn stack of papers that's this freaking big you know talking about some 400 plus 250 plus 200 plus 300 you know what i'm saying and looking all stressed rubbing his damn head and talking about some you know what i'm saying okay i'm trying to make sure i'm gonna have enough to cover these bills and all this other stuff you know and as an ex-convent 
getting out is hard to apply for a credit card and get a credit card. I said, well, you sure as hell look like you having a better time than me. And I've never been arrested now once. Okay. And he got to be jumping over a fist just to get a credit card and all this different kind of stuff. Right. And so he trying to make sure that, you know, the debt he has is good and that he hides all these bills in the damn bathroom. And I said, this is the reason why Taylor didn't want to mess with you in the first damn place. You doing exactly what you know, she said you was basically hanging your hat above your head and living beyond your means. Right. So more than likely that is probably debt collectors that's freaking calling. Right. And so, of course, you know, even though she may not know all the details, this is making her worry and stuff like that. And then when she didn't want to when he didn't want to answer her about the phone and she got frustrated and she said she was going to go ahead and walk out or whatever the case may be. He over here talking about some by Felicia. I said, really? Like, I don't like nothing about this man. Nothing about him at all. He disgusts me so much. So I was really like, why do we have to see him again? I hope eventually she packs it up and um goes and lives with her damn sister and take all the freaking kids with her. Either she kick him out because I'm just not here for him. But that's what we had going on in this episode, y'all. Y'all put it in the comments. Tell me which I liked about this episode, which I didn't like. Anything I left out, you know what I'm saying? Put it in the comments. Let's discuss it down there. Of course, we did not see... um. You know, Marcelino and Brittany this time around. I heard that they was back on this season. They another couple that I'm just like, why, 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 why? Okay, we don't need it. <laughs> but, you know, like, comment, share, subscribe, 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 y'all. Give me a wave. Let me know you came by. Put some flames up in the sky. Till next time, y'all. Toodaloo.